let's go back to item 6.4, 940 AM item, presentation by North Shore Fire regarding their fire fuels crew project. All right. And if you'd like, you can sit down in one of the seats up front. That way you can remain while we have the, the question and answer portion as well. And Mr. Chair, the chief has brought a PowerPoint presentation that I think Matthew is ready to queue up when the chief wishes him to do that. Okay. And so I'll uh, go ahead and introduce this. Um, chief and I, and I think it was the chair from uh, Habemitlal have met, I think it was back in April or May, we were discussing some of this. And uh, chief is looking for um, some other ways to combat the fuels that we have. Um, at, at certain times, we used to have jail crews. We used to have other agencies that were allowed to do a volunteers and things of that nature. But for whatever reason, we, we don't have those resources any longer. And so um, we met, discussed some budgetary items, and I think the chief is going to go ahead and uh, bring forward everything that we've discussed in that in a in a more organized manner, but uh, just wanted to say this is a very good idea, and uh, thank you, Chief, for bringing it forward. So, uh, Chairman uh, Sabatier and Supervisors, thank you for letting me uh, present this. And uh, so, as uh, Supervisor Crandall said, this was a just was a brainstorming thing that started that uh, once the ball started rolling, it's rolling quite quickly. Um, so we decided that we needed to have a fire, uh, a fuels crew to help with the reduction of fuels around the county, not only in my district, but around the entire county. So we can go to the next slide here and I'll start from there. It should be coming. Okay. <laughs> there it is. Yeah. yeah. So, so we started talking about it, um, with that and also my two board members that are in the back, uh, Shannon Steelwell and John Barnett, also helping me uh, walk through this process. And we decided that we needed to develop a fuels crew um, and uh, some of the impacts it may or may not have. Fuels crew it obviously will clear the brush. We're seeing less and less of those crews available. Um, as a matter of fact, we don't even get a response of a hand crew or of any type on a wildland fire anymore. It has to be requested and it has to be approved uh, because of the lack of resources throughout the state. Um, so developing this crew, we can do prescribed berms appropriate and throughout the county. The crew, the, the, the number two bullet there really is the one of the most important ones for the uh, fire districts as a whole, because right now what happens is our fire crews stay on the scene till the fire is entirely mopped up, till it's out 100%. Well, that means that someone, uh, the next emergency is not being taken care of. So if we develop this crew, um, they can also respond to these fires, take the place of those EMS firefighter positions, put them back in the stations for the next emergency, and uh, still we can get the fire mopped up. Uh, and then the impact, another one the crew will do is fuel mitigation. Oops, I hit something there. Hit escape. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it will, they'll do projects. This is one we're still kind of working on, uh, but fuel mitigation projects, we know throughout the town halls that I attend and uh, Supervisor Crandall attend on the North Shore specifically, um, there is a, the theme is the same. I don't, I can't do the work, I'm too uh, yeah, elderly. Uh, where do I get this work done? How do I get it done? So we're trying to help out with that. And uh, this seems to be uh, how we can. Next slide. So as the ball started to get rolling, uh, we decided that we're kind of in the middle of a, of a grant season, so to speak. If I really wanted to get this crew off the ground and I don't like waiting, <laughs> um, we had to do something fairly fast. Um, as you can see, uh, back to our brainstorming that happened in April and, and uh, May uh, with Supervisor Crandall and uh, Ms. Trappa, Chairman Trappa from Habmatol. Uh, we did a presentation. She called me back fairly quickly within a week, and uh, I made a formal presentation to their board on this on my plan for this crew. Um, they sub subsequently decided to fund the payroll and benefits uh, for this 
uh, plan. Now the reason why uh, this presentation is being made is because that is the budget for the fuels crew for one year. Um, and what I had asked for is I need funding for the first year so that we can work on securing grant funding for multi uh, future years. Um, I'm running a model that's similar to North Lake Tahoe Fire Protection District. They have a fuels crew of 65 people that is 95% run by grants. The other 5% is a, is a private contract with Northern Nevada Utilities. Um, so it's doable and it's possible. Um, but I needed to get off the ground. If I waited to try to write those grants and then see if we get it and go from there, we're looking at 22, 23 uh, fiscal years before we can get started. And in my opinion, that's just too far in the future. We need to get started now. Um, so we have the payroll and benefits portion of this crew funded. It's, it calls for one fire captain, crew supervisor, and 10 crew members. Um, they are gonna be full-time employees of North Shore Fire Protection District. They will be benefited positions. Um, they will be titled firefighters with less lower a level of requirements training-wise, and we'll train them on the job um, for the fuels crew. What I'm looking for today, you can see, is the outstanding part there is the equipment. My budget, my 911 budget, 911 budget uh, does not have the ability to fund this crew or the equipment or the saws, the hand tools, the things like that to run this crew. So that's what I'm looking for and that's an estimate of that 473. And then some operating costs, we've actually, uh, I've made presentations to Robinson Rancheria and uh, pg and &E, the Wine Alliance, things like that to help with the operating costs and uh, see where we can go from that. They're all in consideration. Uh, I did have a good meeting with Robinson Rancheria about, uh, they have a fuels crew also, Terra, um, but maybe that they also have a petroleum products there, so maybe the fuel, and oils and things like that, that will need, um, can be, can be uh, worked out some sort of arrangement there. Um, so we've really, we've been searching everyone and you're kind of one of the last to come forward <laughs> and do that. Um, grant opportunities, so we recognized early on that this is not something I can do alone. Uh, when we ran our special measure, one of, the one of the things that we ran off of was it takes a village. It's not just one person. So um, we have developed partnerships with different people in uh, Lake County, Clerk. Um, we've had meetings with them. Um, they're really excited and looking forward to this, our partnership with them. Um, we partnered with uh, the RRA, I, I sit on that and have attended most of that. Um, so I'm just looking to get the rest of the funding for this par particular project so that I can move forward. Um, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty excited that we actually got the funding for the payroll and benefits. I am gonna hire the fire captain probably within the next month and a half and uh, go from there. And next slide. Sorry, I forgot I was in charge of that. <laughs> So some of the requirements is establish a risk and hazard criteria for communities to determine priority parcels. So this is, a, this is kind of a big deal, is how do you do this? Um, there's been questions raised, will this crew only work on the North Shore or will it work anywhere in the county? There's not enough grants on the North Shore to keep it funded full time. So this crew is gonna work wherever the work is, wherever the funding is to, through grants or, or individuals. Uh, throughout the county and um, but the we need to establish the priorities and we haven't done that we've had some preliminary meetings uh, the fire chiefs association and uh, clerk are all and the, are working on the CWPP and other things to determine what is the priority level how do we prioritize projects how do we get those things done so that kind of work that kind of discussion is going on in the background um, as we speak. So that'll be our prioritization. Uh, 
and while I inherited being on the RRA board <laughs> when I took over as chief, um, that has expanded. Now we have plenty of uh, different organizations, fire safe councils, the firewise communities and things like that that we're really involved with. And there seems to be a lot of energy uh, from all of those different organizations for this type of program. Mitigation, understanding what is already being done by the CWPP. That CWPP probably is way more important than anyone realizes. Um, the one thing that uh, Shannon uh, Stillwell and I took out of, we went up and visited North Lake Tahoe Fire Protection District. Every single grant that they write refers to the CWPP. Um, we need to get that thing completed and get it adopted and, and use it use it for future grant opportunities on a federal level. Um, they, they call that program out a lot. Um, and then how can, how and how the North Shore Fuels crew can fulfill a role in the plan. So, so the one thing that we heard loud and clear early on was, uh, spe specifically from Clerk was, they have projects, but they're having trouble finding workers. They're having trouble finding crews. They're, they're already, they're booked, they can't get enough employees or whatever. So they end up going outside. I wanna develop a crew, I wanna keep that money here locally. And so that we're not having to uh, get crews from you know, Sacramento or even further out than that. Um, I wanna keep that money locally if we can. Um, and I'm not above deciding this is not only just a hand fuel crew uh, group, uh, we want to. I want to start a chipping program uh, on the North Shore, but wherever that's at, uh, we'll we'll chip anywhere and wherever the funding is available for that. Uh, the biomass removal things uh, may be a part. I know that uh, the Big Valley, Scotts Valley, Big Valley is working on a biomass group. Uh, so maybe there's some partnerships there that we can still tap into, I haven't even really discussed that with them directly yet. Um, and then the community. Uh, developing the cooperation within community members, increasing awareness and education, provide defensible space assessments, home hardening is a big one, uh, and then training residents about the fuels crew and how they can access these resources. Um, one thing that uh, North Lake Tahoe Fire Protection District did is they have an online online uh, form that you can fill out and uh, you bring it and they fill it out and uh, the, the chipping crew there comes by, chips it, chips it back into the yard and they go on to the next one. They do approximately, approximately 1,700 lots in a six month period. <laughs> so they're, they're very busy in a 12 mi square mile area. Um, okay, next slide. So recruitment. So the first, the first hurdle is the funding, and we're getting there. Um, the second hurdle, as you all know, is going to be recruitment. Um, fuels crew, it's, they have to be a minimum age of 18. They have to meet the standards of my fire the, the department policies, and then we will train them on the job. Um, I have uh, staff inside the department that's working on strategies, but the graduating seniors that really don't know what they want to do um, is a good place to start. Um, the community colleges, believe it or not, Santa Rosa, Memor uh, Santa Rosa Community College, uh, they actually have fuel crew classes at their college now. How to, how to be prepared to get a fuels crew job. Um, you know, uh, tribal communities, I'm not opposed to any of those, and then utilizing a hiring agency if we have to. Um, we're going to look high and low for employees that want to be. Um, the one thing that uh, under the training and development that is on there is once they are a member of the North Shore, they open up to a lot more training that we offer. Um, I offer paramedic training, I'll pay for it, um, and then they through it with our department, they can get other training to maybe transition over to the 911 side of the fire department. 
so I'm going to skip to bullet number two. The knowledge transfer with North Lake Tahoe Fire District with the site training and onboard opportunities. Early on in this, I reached out to our Lake County representative at PG&E, Donovan Lee, and uh, he made, got me in touch with a gentleman, a friend of his, by the name of, uh, he's a division chief with North Lake Tahoe Fire Protection District, Isaac Pounding. Um, they are kind of the model for the nation and their crew. Their crew's been around for 25 years. They do it very well. Um, so Shannon and I, as I indicated earlier, we went up there and visited with them for a whole day. They gave us a bunch of information. Um, they have offered to come here and help us uh, on site train. And then they have also offered and do on a regular basis, invite crews to come shadow their crews so that you get an idea of how to do it. Um, so I intend on taking advantage of those situations and uh, opportunities with the North Lake Tahoe Fire District and uh, getting our crew up and running as quickly as we can so that uh, we can be um, working by next summer. Uh, specialized training for fuel mitigation projects, established program details. So this crew is dedicated to fuel reduction um, and education. So, you know, they will be doing training. They will learn how to uh, provide help, assistance with uh, prescribed burns, um, home hardening, how to give in presentations to the community as needed, and uh, how to, how to uh, harden the home. Ongoing training with the fuels crew request, uh, some goals. My board has been very uh, good about giving me, you need to have a one-year plan, three-year plan, five-year plan. My hope is by year two that they're responding within the county to wildland fire emergencies as a, as a crew, a hand crew, and can help out assist with the mop up and, and things of, uh, on our calls. Um, down the line further, Maybe we can get them certified as a crew, increase the uh, staff a little bit and then get them certified as a regular hand crew and can respond to emergencies outside of the county. Uh, but that's down the road, but it's good to have some goals. <laughs> okay. So lastly, here's our, our roadblocks is the initial development costs and funding. Um, I've talked much about that. Um, and that's kind of what I'm looking for, maybe hopefully some support today, um, is that funding. Once we're over that hurdle, I have to, I really have to do that recruitment side. That'll be my next hurdle, as I said. Um, lack of awareness and understanding within the county. I've put this uh, presentation on several times now and uh, still people, some don't understand what it is or what we can do. And we need to educate and do a little bit better uh, job of that. Incapable of finding qualified crew members and represents the North Shore Fire Protectors in a professional manner on and off the line. Yeah, as we know, hiring is hard right now for any job. Um, and I don't think that this is going to be any different. But I believe that, I believe that there are kids out there, that's why we're going to kind of center on high school seniors that are graduating that don't really know yet, but we, let's give them some skills and let's try to uh, uh, see if, they, if the fire service is something they're interested in. So that's kind of my presentation. Um, I cut it down because uh, it could be rather long, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and I think the sustainability is the failure the last one there I see it come back up is the failure. If we, you know, I, I'm going to rely on grant funding. I don't have the funds within my own uh, 911 budget, as I put it, to uh, support this program long term. And uh, the partnerships like with Clerk and others are going to be very, very important for sustaining the crew after year one. Um, so that's my presentation. And I'll be glad, glad be happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much, Chief Ciancio, yeah. for your presentation. Supervisor Crandall, would you like to make some final comments yes. before we open it up? Chief, thank you for, for going over that. Um, and I just wanted to highlight that um, one, of the, one of the discussions that, or topics of discussion that Chief mentioned was 
having having someone to mop up while we're attending another emergency. Um, back in, I think it was July, Nice had, a, had a, a fire, and then there was one in Clear Lake Oaks right afterwards, and so that's a, that's a typical situation. What happened Sunday, um, same thing. There could have been something else that happened, and then we need someone to um, fill the shoes of that. And so um, I appreciate the fact that it's countywide. Another thing I really appreciate is the fact that you're targeting the 18-year-olds. There are a lot of kids that come out of school that aren't ready for college or don't want to go to college and need jobs. Um, and so it's, it's just good to see other options out there. I'm prepared to um, provide some of my discretionary funds. I know I just spent some last week, but this serves a lot of purposes. This serves, you know, the, the fact that we're, we're this, is a, this is a crisis when it comes to fires. It's one of the many crises we're dealing with. So I'm prepared to, to, to help in any way I can. I only have a specific amount, but I know that I've seen, you said the outstanding funds is 521779. Um, so I, you know, I, I spent, I think it was 50,000 last year. And of course I, uh, assigned and that pretty much assigns another 40 something thousand for the next year. Um, so I think, I, I think I can cover, uh, some of the, some of the, from the 73 to the hundred thousand and I'm prepared to, uh, to, to apply some of that. But also, uh, I know that one of the topics that we discussed is we would like to see if there's another way we can apply this towards some of the um, funding that's in the percentage for the um, cannabis funds as well. Um, so just wanted to highlight that and, uh, you know, go Thank you there. very much. Supervisor Paiska? I am so excited about this project. This is what we have work, been working for, uh, working towards with the Risk Reduction Authority and, and before that with the Cawberry Council. I've, I've spent every day since the Valley Fire six years ago um, working on building this capacity in our county to, to manage um, the vegetation that we have. And, and I don't know if anyone's been looking around, um, but, but we already had a problem with um, with vegetation in our in our county, but but this summer with the drought and the heat, we've lost thousands of trees, and our our forests are are being uh, decimated today. So this is not a pro this this is not a problem that we can ever put on the back burner. We have to continually work towards um, to managing what we have to keep our communities safe. Um, so we've been setting the goal to build capacity in our county to get this work done. But Chief Sionso is correct. We do not have the crew, the crews to do the work that needs to be done. And so I'm really excited. I know that this that your focus is the North Shore, but let's be honest, the North Shore is a huge part of our county to begin with. But I know that you're going to be working with Clerk and everybody else to address the priorities that are are in our CWPP and and are in our CMAT. And we're having our risk reduction quarterly meeting or update right after this, a little bit later today. So you're going to hear about all this work that we've been doing. And this is this is so exciting to have one of the projects finally come forward. So I support this wholeheartedly. Um, you know, this is, I hope, just the beginning of, of this type of work that we can do collaboratively and cooperatively in our county. Thank you very much. Supervisor Sam? Yeah. You know, you made a very good point. Um, we, we heard this presentation at the Risk Reduction Authority, and obviously we understood the importance, and I know we did a support letter uh, that was put in on one of the grants to, to help this move forward. So. Uh, just as Jessica said, the collaboration and coordination to get projects started and boots on the ground, I think is, you know, the most important and critical thing. Uh, you made a statement earlier about the CWPP uh, that a lot of folks don't understand how important that is. Uh, but we clearly do here at the board level on the Lake County Risk Reduction Authority and the fire chiefs, how important that document is for us moving forward. Um, and, and we're at a critical point of trying to get that completed now here. Uh, as, as soon as possible. Uh, we have RCD working on that to get that updated and it's starting to be circulated. So we, we clearly understand that and um, look at that as being, as you said, the roadmap to the future on how we're making the real impacts here in Lake County. Um, the other thing that I am excited about on this project, as we said, um, and we looked at this tragedies, there's always opportunities uh, that come out of that. And I think one of the things Building a new economy, this fire crew is an opportunity for young folks for job opportunities, for training, just as you had said. And I think we really need to grow on that because this is going to be a part of our lives for the next, well, the rest of our lives. But for sure, the next 20 years, 
on vegetation abatement, climate change, how it's affecting the world. And this is an opportunity. I, I know we talk about uh, higher education and other things throughout Lake County, but as Supervisor Crandall said, there are a lot of folks that are just workers. They want to get up in the morning, they want to go to work and see something done at the end of the day, and they're not going to go to college. And I think this is an important way uh, to get those folks that are looking for direction for opportunities in a new economy in Lake County. So I am excited about the project also. Uh, there are some projects that I would love to see this crew in South Lake County. Uh, you know, we have some serious issue with vegetation growing throughout the creeks that go by both Middletown and Hidden Valley. Uh, there are plenty of other projects that need to be uh, done too. So, uh, you know, like I said, I'm excited about the opportunity and the conversation we're having today. Um, so there is one other coordination opportunity. We have the Workforce Alliance in North Bay. Uh, I've asked them, Bruce Wilson, to come to our October 18th meeting. That is a JPA that we set as a county uh, for job creation, job training, education, and other things. So I'm hoping we can tie this together with the long-term relationship with that JPA that we also have uh, with um, that, that myself and Jessica Piska set on. And uh, hopefully we can get some of those training dollars and other things in the future at least talked about to be funneled through uh, this program. At least that's initial conversations we'd like to have. Um, but I, too, uh, support this opportunity and this program. I know that there is another work crew out there, the Eco Restoration, the Terra program that's being run. Yeah. Um, so this is just a collaboration effort uh, that will just help us increase these things as we all get those calls, whatever district we're in or area a project that needs to be done once the CWPP is completed and we can look at these things and focus over the next few years will really help us make an impact. Um, I, I myself too, um, uh, like Supervisor Crandall said, um, and I haven't asked CAO if that's an opportunity. I know that as a board member, I have um, some, some funds that can be used in my district or um, I'm hoping it can be used all over the county if I decide for that. Uh, but out of my discretionary funds, I'm, I'm prepared also to uh, put in on this project uh, throughout with those dollars. So, um, and I know I think the starting balance is about $200,000 that we have for each district. And I'd be willing out of those funds. I got some projects I got to get done in my district. <laughs> so I can't do all of them. Uh, but to start with, I, I know I would be willing to put in $100,000 towards the opportunity to get this going. Awesome. So um, that was uh, it's a 50 50 split. But, you know, um, you know, we want to make sure it's countywide. I know you said that to start with. Um, so I think the impact it can have, uh, that's how much I believe in it. And like I said, I do have some other projects, so i got to keep at least 50% on some things that got to get done this year. But uh, I would be willing to step up and work that out with the CAO to put my funds, uh, $100,000 towards this project to get it started. Uh, one other thing, too, and I think we've had offline conversations um, uh, and wearing our other hat, I, I think the coordination, uh, as you said, collaboration, uh, I just really want to thank the Bamboo Tribe for stepping up, uh, you know, and what they've done so far and committed. Uh, just, you, you know, uh, another great thing that uh, that government is doing here for Lake County residents. Uh, but continue those conversation and collaborations. Uh, we've got a brand new chipper, a big old uh, bandit, I think it's a bandit chipper. You know, we paid about $50,000 in our organization. Uh, from the tribal side that could could do some real help. So we coordinate with that. We'd be I know we'd be willing to talk about a partnership to volunteering that machine to be used also uh, for some of that chipping stuff. So maybe that can help on some of the costs to begin with. So anyway, thank you very much, Chief. Yeah, Appreciate thank the you. presentation. Supervisor Scott. Well, I definitely support this program. It's definitely needed in our community. I guess my question would be, when do we believe our CWPP will be completed? Because I know you're saying we need that completed to be able to go to receive more grant funding. Yeah, so we're, we're, we're pretty close. Um, the first presentation is actually going to be made to the fire chiefs. Uh, we've been in, in contact with Lena Juttonen uh, to do that. Um, and uh, so she's pretty close. They haven't actually given us a date, but I kind of pushed last meeting last month and said, when are we going to see this? And uh, I don't think it'll be too far out. Harry Lyons uh, is kind of coordinating that one. So I believe that it, it'll be before the first year for sure. Um, and then I don't, I don't know if there was funding already set aside or we've spoken about this, but can we maybe 
convene a cannabis funding um, meeting and go back and, and look at that and see if we can't come up with the rest of the money. Um, I've already allocated my funds. I'm looking to do creek cleaning. So kind of on the same set, yeah. just looking to clean out the creeks. I was kind of hoping one of the fires would go through and take out the brush in the creeks, but we haven't been so lucky. Yeah. <laughs> that happen. But I, I would love to um, convene the cannabis committee and, and see if we can't come back with the rest of the funds needed to finish this project. Thank you for your comment. Supervisor Pyska. Um Yeah, I just wanted to follow up on the CWPP. It, it is due any minute. We're all anxiously waiting. But um, our, our Civic Spark Laurel Ward last year did mapping of several of the priority areas. So they've already, um, they're already there. Um, it's, it's just, you know, having it in the official report where the chiefs are going to you know, take a look at that and determine what the priorities are. But the work that clerk has, has uh, mapped out has identified, has funding for, does not have the crew for. So yeah. that's really where the capacity comes in. It's so, so important. Um, and I would love to have the cannabis committee take a look at filling in the gap, and then I would love to put in 50,000 too. Thank you. I appreciate the uh, presentation. This is something that I think we've all worked on individually to try and protect our communities. Um, I know that there was some great collaboration done over in the east side of Clear Lake uh, between yeah. BLM, CAL FIRE, our local districts, yeah. and CLERC. Actually, CLERC, I would say, saved the day by providing the sequel that we needed to be able to get it all done. It's unfortunate the process that is required to do some of the work that needs to be done. Uh, whether it's clearing vegetation or control burns, uh, there's still a pretty intense uh, bureaucratic process to go through. And so I really hope that people, uh, agencies like CLERC can join in to help us prepare those things and help move forward faster. Right now we're talking about the crew, but it's going to take some, some actual uh, green lights for us to get those things approved for the crew to work on. Uh, that to me is, is just as important as the crew or else we have a crew and we can't do the work uh, or we're cleaning up after the fact. We all know fires, it's so much more than just a fire. Uh, the trauma it causes our community, uh, the displacement of our communities, we have to figure out ways to mitigate and minimize the impacts. We're never gonna stop fires, but it's the idea of not letting them grow into 10,000 acres, into 100,000 acres. Um, and so it, it was sad for me for the cash fire. It's one of the areas we did not clean up. Uh, this year. We did almost everything around except for that one area. And so it's just, it's, it's fire finds a place. It's about mitigate, mitigating and minimizing the actual impacts of the fires. Um, this needs to be county. I'm glad that even though it's titled North Shore, you're already speaking of the county. Um, and I am going to echo some of the sentiments that were shared by Supervisor Simon. I'm hoping that this is a pilot program to something larger in the long run. I don't see how this will prove unsuccessful. This is absolutely necessary, but to have a North Shore fire crew and having a South Shore fire crew that takes care of all around the county uh, and working together based on where the need is, I think is the way to go. Um, it's already been mentioned. I, I know that we have $9 million right now in reserves, not, not accounting for the, um, I lost the term, for the uh, money set aside, we had $3.2 million for uh, retention or whatever it was called. I forget that exact category. The workforce. workforce retention. Or workforce a retention. Uh, so we still have $9 million set aside. In my opinion, that, that's, that's what we need to look at. And so absolutely, let's have that, uh, the cannabis committee take a look at it and bring it back to the board, see what's possible. Because I, I, in my opinion, this is on our vision 2028 on how to better protect our environment. The, the funding that was provided to us as individuals was for projects within the community. This crosses all boundaries, all borders, and is uh, something that we should be doing. And I'm glad that it's pr uh, being, uh, we're being approached with this offer, and I think we need to take the offer. So I'm, I'm all in favor for bringing this back on how it's going to get funded. I think it's absolutely 100% possible to fund it. Um, I, I, I almost want to offer that we need to look at, at two different ways, a one-year and a two-year funding, uh, just for the fact that we want to make sure as we complete the CWPP that that gets completed in time so that you can request the right appropriate grants. 
uh, and continuously do what you've already done, which has been fabulous as far as asking for other agencies and businesses around the lake to help support this. Um, I think that we can get there and we will get there. Supervisor yeah, I, I just want to follow up on the, the, the multi-year plan. Um, the strategic planning of this project is obviously very important, and we've talked about this before. What the Risk Reduction Authority is doing, which um, we'll speak about in a little bit, is we have a best fits grant meeting. Um, is it once a month now, or is it every, it's every two weeks? So that's where all the nonprofits and agencies come together, sit at the table, look at all the grants that are available, figure out who should apply for which one, who can supply letters of support. And, and that's the first avenue for the strategic planning for the funding. And then um, and we can, can work to backfill whatever isn't fun. But this is going after PG&E grants, Fire Safe Council grants from the state. These are really big pots of money uh, that are really important. And, and it's important for us to support all of the agencies that are going through that process. Absolutely. So thank you again. And uh, I'm certain that we will come back and find some way to make this happen and make this possible. If there's no further comments, let's go ahead and open it up to the public. Chief, please. You can start the public comment. And actually, uh, let me change that. We are not starting public comment. You have the, more than three minutes. You can speak. <laughs> I'll keep it short. <laughs> I, know, I don't want to limit you. So. It's all good. Um, no, we uh, collectively as the Fire Chiefs Association and individual fire chiefs to include Forest Service and Cal Fire BLM. Totally hats off the mic for moving forward with this. You know, over my ten years, Chief, we've uh, lost over 50% of our county land mass, 3,200 structures, and it's amazing if we uh, sit back in time. Our biggest fires in Lake County were the Mendenhall Complex in 1986 and the Forks Fire in 1996 of over 80,000 acres. You know, through that time, we're seeing those devastating fires that are 10, 20, 30, up to 100,000 acres. The LNU, the MEU, and you know the severity. Of, of where our fuels are, are year round now. Our fire season doesn't close. And then we support Mike 100% on this, and we think it's a great idea. And there are, when we look at vetting these projects, is the critical infrastructure, the economic impact, the environmental impact. And, and those critical infrastructures are each of uh, us as fire chiefs have critical um, communities, whether it be Noble Ranch, whether it be Spring Valley, whether it be Robinson area. Those are all areas that are just waiting for a coffee park. And so in 41 years of serving this county, um, the fire growth has just, just grown to unproportions. So we're seeing fires that are burning six to 10,000 acres in an hour. And so we need to get in and do these fuel reductions. And like I said, working with Mike, this being a countywide project, logistically, operationally, we're, we're there to support him. You know, I think that it's nice having a new fresh chief that has a, a little bit better um, outlook on the big picture. And uh, the hat's off to you, Mike. This is fantastic. And for the board to, to support that. If we don't, we're going to have another coffee park and we're going to have those fires continue. As you talked about the cash fire, that was one of the, the fires that within, within three minutes went from a quarter acre to three acres, 20 mile an hour winds. And before I knew it, I lost 64 structures within my district astronomical that we had no casualties out of that. And that is going to continue unless we do these fuel reduction projects. And what I like about Mike's project is that it's not just a one-time, it's sustainable. If we look at our shaded fuel breaks along 281, so debate, those were done, but there wasn't sustainability to make sure we maintain those shaded fuel breaks. And so I think that with some of the issues and some of the things we've done with local abatement, administrative penalties, is that a good majority of our property owners are absentee property owners and they don't realize the impact that their properties even though we've done everything to try to get them to abate them working with mike and those other groups to get these areas mitigated to protect and have defensible spaces there so and that's it i, I appreciate your support mike awesome job dude really it, it is awesome to work with a group of fire chiefs that, that i work with joe and paul and and of course jeff the new fire chief the new kid on the block and of course mike so Thank you. Thank you very much. Any further public comment in the boardroom? And then I see that we have Laura, Laurel Bard. Let's go ahead and unmute her. And please provide your name. Hello, this is Laurel Bard from Clear Lake Environmental Research Center speaking. 
Uh, I just wanted to thank Chief Ciancio for giving the, an excellent presentation. Uh, as everyone else has said, this is incredibly relevant work, uh, especially when it comes to implementing projects that are in the Community Wildfire Protection Plan. Um, and Clear Lake Environmental Research Center is fully committed to identifying projects, conducting community outreach, and passing those projects along to the fuels crew, uh, as well as um, conducting the necessary environmental review to make sure that we're doing all of this in an ecologically sustainable way. Uh, just, yeah, just really wanted to offer my support and say that I'm really excited that this program is happening and we look forward to working with you, Chief Ciancio. Thank you very much for your comment. And I see no further hands up in the Zoom room and no one getting up to speak here in the boardroom. So bring it back to the board. Any further comments? I, I did want to make one comment I forgot to make is I, I know in the past I've seen a lot of work, whether it's through construction programs. I believe there was an EMT program uh, over at Carley High School. I don't know if EMT is the right term for that, but it was something along those lines. And I think that those uh, schools are, are good candidates for finding some of that workforce. I know a Locunoma possibly. Um, and so just putting it out there, uh, I know those kids are, are, are looking to get involved in something. Uh, the schools are trying to get them involved in those types of things, and so I think that uh, that might be a good place as well to find some of those candidates. Yeah, absolutely. I'm open to all the strategies because, as I said, that'll be the next hurdle is really recruitment yep. um, for sure. But thank you again for your presentation. Uh, uh, as you can see, uh, there, there's uh, not much uh, friction for getting that support. Uh, <laughs> it, it, it came very easily. We're all looking forward to uh, increasing the safety uh, of our communities and this sounds like this is right along those lines so and I'd, I'd like to just thank you all for the support and uh, I kind of got the same feeling I got when I got the phone call from Hav Matol and the other half of it so uh, <laughs> it's moving fast and I don't know that I anticipated it moving this fast but uh, we're I'm willing to deal with it and get get it going I'd like to have boots on the ground by May of next year awesome so that's my goal awesome so thank you Thank you very much, Supervisor Crandall. Yes, and Chief, just thank you again. I, um, for me, it's important to get something like this going because, um, you know, I, we've been working, I was on the Risk Reduction Authority as well, and I know that there's a lot of hurdles we had to jump through, especially the pandemic, but also just waiting on the agencies to, uh, to kind of conduct that oversight they needed with us, so that kind of hindered some of what we were trying to do. Um, so putting something to action is commonly what we were looking for, you know, and so... Uh, this this does that. Thank you. Thank you, Chief.